Hailing from the Chevrolet Exterior Studio 3, the Chevrolet Beretta was designed in the same studio as the Camaro and the Corvette. Produced from 1987 to 1996, the Beretta sat on the GML platform, similar to that of the Chevrolet Corsica four-door variant, as well as a Canadian-only four-door Pontiac Tempest, a badge-engineered Corsica. In 1994, the GT and the GTZ were replaced by the Beretta Z26, which put it squarely between the Cavalier Z24 and the Lumina Z34 in Chevrolet's lineup. The 3.1-liter V6 engine was redesigned and became the 3100 series V6 and gained 20 horsepower, bringing it up to 160. Beretta sales steadily declined every year of production as the market turned away from two-door models. In 1996, Chevrolet ended the production of both Beretta and Corsica after 10 model years. The Corsica was replaced by the Chevrolet Malibu in 1997. The last Beretta rolled off the assembly line on July 30th of 1996. Our car was built at the Wilmington Assembly Plant in Delaware, which was closed in 2009 and demolished in 2019. In February of 1994 was when our car was built. Hey everyone, in today's in-depth review, I am proud to be able to present to you this very nice surviving example of a 1994 Chevrolet Beretta. Today's Beretta is at GMG Motors in Morgantown, Indiana. Huge shout out to them for letting me film their car. Just a very nice example of a dark or medium garnet red metallic Chevrolet Beretta. Now this Beretta had two trims, just the standard base and the Z26. That was a more performance oriented car that had the quad four engine. And this car does not have that. It's just a basic trim level. It does have some options like the 3.1 liter V6 and the automatic transmission. That's about it. Our car happens to be a Beretta six cylinder special value package. And as it so happens, it's powered by a newly redesigned 3.1 liter 3100 series L82 overhead valve pushrod V6 engine. This engine is of cast iron block aluminum head construction with sequential fuel injection and a 9.5 to 1 compression ratio. This engine creates 160 horsepower at 5,200 RPM and 185 pound-feet of torque at 4,000 RPM. The Beretta can accelerate from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 8.8 .8 seconds and 0 to 100 miles per hour in 24.9 seconds. The quarter miles elapsed in 16.5 seconds at 86 miles per hour, with its top speed limited to 110 miles per hour electronically. The Beretta features a 15.2 US gallon fuel capacity and consumes 4.8 gallons per 100 miles driven, with an estimated total driving range of 319 miles. EPA fuel economy figures are 18 miles per gallon in the city, 27 miles per gallon on the highway, and 21 miles per gallon combined average. The transmission in our car is an electronically controlled 4-speed turbo hydromatic 4T60E automatic transmission. As we walk along the rear of the car, even though it's related more directly to the Corsica, the Beretta from the rear actually looks basically like its own car. The Corsica had more narrow tail lamps, whereas the Beretta had more upright Fiero inspired tail lamps. You'll see the dark smoke lenses and the Beretta badging and all that kind of stuff. Also had a vestigial trunk lid spoiler. Alrighty, so while the Beretta is actually related to the Corsica, it is a little bit smaller, being that it is a two-door, and it's styled a little bit differently from its Corsica cousin. One really cool thing I like about this car is the large, expansive greenhouse in this car. Huge amounts of glass. You got this black uh, textured window frame, gloss black surrounds here on the pillars, these really cool concealed door handles. 
One other cool thing is this uh, swooping glass panel down here. It's gotta be really expensive to fix and replace. Coming down to the trunk line, you have this little vestigial spoiler that comes up into the uh, dark smoked lenses of the rear tail lamps. They have the uh, grates here. They're all incandescent, of course. You got your uh, reverse lamps in here, and of course, just the turn indicators, brake lamps, and stop lamp or uh, tail lights. You got the Beretta lettering right here. And then of course the trunk, which actually looks like it opens down here, but it actually opens up here. We'll show that here in a bit. Just pretty typical 90s GM car. As we walk along the profile of the car, it shows its 90s GM heritage roots. Just in the way it's styled, it looks basically like the other vehicles in the lineup. Kind of cavalierish before the redesign. I don't know. But it's a two-door version of the Corsica, basically. Steering is hydraulically assisted rack and pinion with a 35.4 foot turning radius. Wheels on this car are 14 by 6 inch black painted steel wheels with silver painted bolt-on wheel covers. These wheels are shot in 185-75 R14 Douglas Extra Track 2 all-season tires. And brakes are power-assisted front disc rear drums. They are assisted by four-wheel ABS. All right, up front. Looks more like the Lumina up front from this era. Very aerodynamic. I remember these cars as a kid, but I don't re really remember spending much time around them. But you do have the sealed beam headlamps, the gloss black grille. That would be a single solid piece of plastic if it was a Z26 performance version. And down below you have your driving lights and turn indicators. All right, so up front, the course or the Beretta actually looks more like the Corsica up front, and that's because it is related to it. Also has some hints of the uh, Cavalier from this era before it got redesigned. You have aerodynamic manually adjustable mirrors, nice flowing hood all the way down to the composite headlamps, black grille with a Chevrolet badge, and of course your turn indicators are mounted low underneath the bumper. The bumper is actually kind of sticks out pretty far from the actual wheel, how the wheels, I mean, you can see how far out it goes and it curves pretty dramatically into the lower air dam there. You've got your side repeaters here as well. All right, so before we get inside, let's take a look at the key situation here. We actually have three sets of keys. So we have ignition, locks, and the trunk. Notice how the trunk is actually facing the opposite way of everything else. Anyway, here's the ignition key, and then of course to get in the doors, we do have power locks, but just sticking the oval key in the door and then turning it, that'll lock and unlock the vehicle. Uh, one thing I do love is this flush mounted door handle here, right into the B pillar. Very aerodynamic, it's not in the body or anything like that, and you just open that up. Now we do show some wear here, but we'll give it some grace considering that, you know, it's 30 years old now. What we have is a garnet cloth interior. And the seats actually have held up pretty well over time considering the fact that they are 30 years old. This is a high wear area, so some, some forgiveness can be given there. Taking a look at the door panels. The door panels are actually very, very long and they're all molded in this nice soft touch uh, vinyl that has a leather look. That cloth is repeated on the doors from the seats. You've got some padded armrest here, door pole. Inside this black trim here, you have your door release, your locks, and your power lock switch. But we have the manual window winder. Don't see that very much anymore. We've also got manual mirror adjust. Small map pockets here in the doors. And GM's attempt at passive restraints. So these were actually designed to stay buckled the entire time. And you were basically supposed to just slide into the car. We'll kind of demonstrate that here in a bit. So here we have fuse access. This little pod here, this is kind of popular in the 90s, but this little pod here controls your headlamps. This out, uh, inner rim controls the headlamps and this outer rim controls your dimmer switch. And your little readout here shows what you're in. And of course, 
moving that around adjust your instrument panel brightness and dim air vent here hood release down here and of course we just have two pedals down here we have the gasoline and the or the accelerator and the brake pedal it was offered in a manual transmission but our car has the uh automatic transmission obd port right here but it's basically an obd 1.5 it was before the obd 2 came out just black entry tread plates nothing special here this is the seat back uh recline and then the fore and aft adjuster up here in these black bars this car does have a tilt steering wheel Taking a look at the seats, the seats are actually very comfortable. They're very supportive. They do have high adjustable head restraints. No lumbar adjust though. If you had the Z26 performance car, you did have lumbar support on it and more aggressive bolstering. But you can see that these seats have, you know, they have an interesting cloth pattern to them. All right, now we're inside. Let's pan through the interior and show more details. As you can see, it's just hydraulically assisted power steering here on a two-spoke steering wheel. It does have a driver's side airbag. You'll notice that the horn buttons are off the side because back in the 90s when we were doing, just introducing airbags into cars, we weren't really sure how to make the whole pad sound the horn, so we moved those to remote locations. But you also see, even underneath the steering wheel cover, you do have these really nice, uh, 10 and 2 detents for where your thumb should rest pretty nicely. This control stalk here controls your high beams. It also controls your turn indicators and things like that. There's a column behind it and it's actually your tilt wheel. This little lever up here is actually your four-way flashers. And we're greeted by the instrument cluster. Now, this car is a base car, so it has the base cluster. There is nothing to speak of here except for a coolant temperature gauge. 120 mile per hour speedometer and a fuel level gauge and you don't even have a trip odometer that was not something popular back then that was usually an option package or up level clusters and this car currently has 150,633 miles on it if you had a z26 you actually had the speedometer the tachometer oil pressure volts coolant and fuel so a full a full gamut Motor Week would be pleased. Not so much with that. Anyway, moving up. So over the pod, we have this black. It's a soft touch material, but it's also kind of a plasticky. It's kind of a hybrid. And you've got your defrost there. And the pods come all the way down here to your rear defroster. You've also got your wiper washer controls. These are all your wiper controls here. So we have just the delay and then low, high. Delay is also controlled by this little twisty knob here. And then they just park down and then in pushing this button in does your washer and they are a wet arm wiper all right so moving across the dash you'll see it has like a faux stitched appearance here and it's starting to warp a little bit but you know that's all right but this is supposed to be like a parcel shelf and it goes down into these vents over here you got two air vents side by side on the passenger side and you have this little curious pull out thing here well, that's dual cup holders. I don't know if I trust those with any heavy cups, but cans, that'd be all right. And the glove box situation is pretty unique. It actually pulls out like a drawer. I actually like that. All right, moving down the center here, we had what was a Beretta badge, and now it's just Beretta Eye. Anyway, more air vents here, and we have GM's factory AM FM cassette player. So just a standard radio, digital LCD readout here, auto reverse cassette deck, auto DNR for uh, Dolby noise reduction. And then down below, we actually have very easy to use climate controls. We have rotary dials for fan, uh, multi-level conditions here. So maximum AC, normal AC. BL is actually called, it's bi-level. So defroster and floor. Got your vent, heater, blend, and defroster there. And of course you can turn it off. And of course your temperature controls pretty basic large expansive space here with almost nothing in it say for the automatic transmission lever and a cigar lighter or a 12 volt power point a little handbrake here and a dual utility tray here it's their marked ashtray and cup holder and they do exactly that 
and then we have a small padded armrest that's starting to give way but it's okay opens up to reveal some coin holders you got their labeled dime quarter and nickel you got some odds and ends storage here and a deeper storage well down here and actually has some carpet in there as well So overall, even though we're looking at a 30-year-old car, I can't even believe I'm saying that because this car, I remember these are brand new when I was growing up. So it's really fun to actually come in and review one of these as it was, you know, relatively in good shape. And the inside is actually still a pretty clever uh, package. I mean, everything falls at hand. It's just a nice little car. Looks like an automatic dimming rearview mirror, but we actually have a menu, uh, manual dimming rearview mirror there. These little toggle switches here actually activate your reading lights that are underneath the car or underneath the mirror padded sun visors fold down they don't actually have any retention clips but they do have non-illuminated vanity mirrors for the driver and the passenger and they do swing out but they do not slide so you'll see the amount of window that you have uncovered is pretty vast and yeah the headliner sagging a little bit save for the reading lights in the mirror that's the only interior illumination except for the dome light the rear passengers actually do not have their own reading lights all right let's get in the back seat now oh boy let's open up the door again and getting into the back seat is actually very easy at once upon a time you'd lift this little catch lever here and it would unrelease the seat back but that's since worn away so it just opens up normal one thing you will notice is that there's no seat back mat pockets back here. But there is your rear seat. Believe it or not, it does seat three across. It is just a standard bench seat. There is no split folding, no folding or anything like that. You do have three point belts on the outboard seats, but just a lap belt for the center passenger. And you'll notice that they actually kind of look like they're sculpted a little bit. So the outer outer seats are actually more of a bucket where the center part portion is a little bit raised for more support. There is no fold-down armrest. There's no cup holders, nothing like that. But rear seat passengers are treated to an ashtray. Go figure. You do have some padded armrests back here, coat hooks. The rear windows do not open in any fashion. Your rear parcel tray is starting to uv stain to pink and a third brake light just plopped there anyway so that is the rear seat of the chevrolet beretta Alright, so remember back when when I said there was three keys? So, this is your door key here. That's your trunk key. The only way to open the trunk in this car, it doesn't have the optional power release. You just stick that trunk key in and turn to the right. And that trunk lid pops right open. And that's what I was saying by 
uh, it affects how it opens. While it looks like it opens down here, it actually opens up here. So what you get, and Motor Week complained about it too, you get a pretty high lift over height. Paired with the relatively narrow opening, uh, even though you have a nice large trunk interior, which is fully lined and fully carpeted by the way, and is also illuminated, it does make for putting he larger heavy objects in it kind of cumbersome. One nice thing is it does have spring-loaded hinges, so they do open right up. And as I stated before, it does have the removable carpeting. And you'll see here, you actually have underneath this panel, which I'll have to unscrew that and I'm not going to, but compact uh, spare tire with jacking tools, all your jacking instructions here, and your service parts identification plaque there. But that carpet can be removed to be cleaned or whatever. And easy tail light bulb access just by releasing these clips here pulling this carpet back and you can change your bulbs pretty easily so that is the trunk of the Chevrolet Beretta and to close it you just close it cars are so simple back then alrighty there you have it trip back in time to 1994 with the Chevrolet Beretta two-door we hope you found the review informative and if you did please comment down below also, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Check out Facebook at facebook.com slash neighborhood car reviews and our Instagram channel at brinsoj1. You can also find us at TikTok at neighborhood car reviews. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.